the owner of the small wood store shot that dude right here right here right this here. beach area right here on the beach here's the store came out they had a confrontation bam see ya <laughs> and that was the end of it right there that was the end of watson Hello everyone and welcome to Space for Three. Today we're in the island of Chokoloski and we're overlooking the 10,000 islands. Today's visit is about the small wood store, historic small wood store in Chokoloski. It was built in 1906 by Ted Smallwood himself and it was placed in the historic registry in 1974. So come along, we, we got go. plenty of space. So we're in the inside of the small wood store. And actually we're about to head into the middle of the store which is exactly like Ted Smallwood would have known it they haven't changed a thing in the middle of the store so we're gonna check that out yeah that's pretty cool it's ran mm -hmm. right now by his grandson so you know for sure everything is being maintained kept up and original his great-grandson well, his great-grandson <laughs> yes Corey <laughs> Corey <laughs> so check it out over here is the pharmacy this is all pharmacy supplies we got baby powder right there some more baby powder some castor oil, boric, boric acid. Boric acid. Boric acid. Welcome to the Smallwood Store Museum. Thank you. It was built in 1906 by my great grandfather. That's him sitting in there in the white shirt and oh, the rocket okay. chair. That's Ted? Yeah. Oh, that's mm -hmm. my great grandfather. I heard that there was a guy that was wanted, he was like a sewer killer, and he got shot here. Out on the, on the beach. Ed Watson. Oh, See Ed that Watson. guy that hand drawn right there? Yeah. That's Watson. That's what these four books right here are written about. So he, that's the guy who was, was a actually shot by my great great grandfather. Oh yeah? Yeah, my great great grandfather. The book says it was Henry Short. But Henry Short was a um he was a black guy that was adopted by my great grandfather. He was uh, his dad was a Buffalo soldier, his mom was white, and you know deep south that didn't fly back then so right. his grandfather sold him off to like a, a camp or a, a trapper okay. and he played with my great uncle until he was until then because they was the same age and then on his way out of georgia he seen that trapper and he kind of treating the boy bad so he took the boy from him and raised him up as his own and then in later life henry short's girlfriend was working down there at uh watson's and she got killed at the place and uh anyway he got my grandpa to back him up and they kind of and watson had killed other people too he killed a lot of people he was and never and the only reason city? he wasn't more fam as famous as billy the kid they say is because he was hidden down here in the swamp. right because he here. supposedly he started up north yeah and he came and to he hide out here in north carolina yeah. then he ran from north carolina to fort white and then from Fort White, he went out to Oklahoma, where he killed Belle Starr. Belle Starr was a girlfriend of Jesse James. Wow. And Cole Younger. She actually had a kid with one of the younger brothers. I think Cole Younger. Wow. And then um, Belle Starr's son, oldest son, and Watson killed her for her control over the land. So his, her son could get control over the farm. Right. Because his dad had died, and he was kind of tossed aside, I mm -hmm. guess. He didn't get along with his mama, so then he tried to kill his mama. So Jesus Christ, he did, he couldn't do it. So he got Watson to help him. So Watson killed her, and then when it came down to it, that they arrested Watson for it. And that Ed Starr, he ran, and Watson caught up to him supposedly and killed him as well. And then he fled down here, and he showed up down here with a lot of money. And they, the rumor is that he showed up down here with Jesse James's gold that mm -hmm. he was supposed to split with Ed Starr to begin with. And because um, he bought the biggest one of the biggest spreads down here for you know a farm, because high ground was kind of a you know right a rare thing down here. Right, right. But then, anyways, he uh, they cornered Watson down here on the beach one day, and they tried to take his guns, and he threw up a double barrel shotgun on them and pulled both triggers, but the shells was wet, and it misfired, 
and my great grandfather aimed right at him and said don't do it and he went for his revolver and he just plugged him right between the eyes and Henry Short pulled up and shot too mm, but wow. they say that Henry Short took the blame so my great grandfather didn't have to go run right. he was an old man at the time right, right, right. and he done it to protect him he, my great grandpa I heard him say this because it was on a videotape I never met him but my grandma took him to Fort Myers and he had she he went in he was recorded talking about it and they had the record made of him talking about it the Watson murders and everything and my mom had a tape of it and she gave it to that guy that wrote the book and when that guy showed up to give the tape back, I was a little kid, I was about four, 13, 14 years old. And I remember taking the tape and listening to it. And Grandpa Ted was like, uh, he was like, he was the best gunslinger I ever seen in my life. He said he could take a pistol from the hip, draw it and shoot a mullet out of the air. Wow. You know how mullet, when they're in the run season, they'll come along the bank school and then they keep plopping along. Mm -hmm. And he said he'd stand there like that and he'd wait for the mud to come along. He'd draw and shoot and blow the mud in half. Back in 1982, this place was shut down. And when it was shut down, 90% of the stuff that was inside was left inside intact. And in 1990, it was reopened by Ted's granddaughter as the museum that it is today. Many meals were eaten at this table. It was built by Ted's youngest daughter, Nancy. And here is... Ted himself. What's going on, Ted? How are you doing today? Cool facts about Ted. This was his violin and he knew how to play it very well. This right here is a kerosene heater and it was installed here in 1948 after the main source of heat, a pot-bellied stove, uh, broke and it was placed in this specific area so that it would warm the post office and family family areas yeah, that's pretty crazy a uh, heater in florida old school coca-cola machine my favorite drink boom and it has some coca cola oh, they're nice and cold look at 1945 how cute they are original little bottles. bottles check it out guys I'm gonna get a Coke. Coca Cola no, Classic. I don't want to diet. I'm gonna get a Sprite. Mm -hmm. This Coca Cola. Oh, yeah. Diet Coca Cola. Found it. There you go. <laughs> Coca Cola. All right, here Waste we go. Mm -hmm. And it just falls right in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. It tastes oh, better out of glass. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Here in the store, they only carried men's apparel, men's pants, men's shirts, nothing for children and nothing for women. Until the 1920s. Yeah. So prior to that, the women had to stay at home, you know how it was back in those days, and they mm -hmm. had to sew up and do their own clothing and their children's clothing. Yep. You could get your thread and your string and your needles, but they couldn't get the actual clothing. No clothing for women available. So these are the little packets that they will use to come up with the latest designs, the latest styles of the 19, early 1900s, 1920s. This store was the happening spot because they carried everything from pharmaceuticals to men's clothing to sugar to the Coca-Cola. It's pretty much anything you needed, they offered it here. And right here, they had this awesome, amazing breeze that came through here because overlooking the 10,000 islands right there. So right here, we are on the outside, on the top level, on the deck of the small wood store. And remember, all this stuff right here, everything we're showing you guys is in its original state. <laughs> yes. That's crazy. Right over there, all oh, that is the 10,000 Islands. If you guys are not subscribed to us yet, make sure you subscribe and ding that notification if you are, because we're going to be taking a boat tour to the 10,000 Islands pretty soon. So you guys might want to check that out also. I believe this is a fuel pump for boats that will come here and dock right on the side. 
Look at how old and beat up this. Oh, it might have been a lighthouse. It's of some form of light. It has light bulbs right here. Hold on, I'm trying to make this out here. It says, Underwriters Laboratory Inspected Visible Measure Discharge for Hazardous Liquids or Use Outside of Building. Doesn't really specify what it is. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see it well, but that boat right over there, that's one of their boats here. In the small wood store, they actually offer boat tours that'll take you around the 10,000 islands. So if you're interested in that, I believe it's like $40 for an hour. It's something else that you could do as another option. If not, you could come and visit the museum and the museum is $5 per adult. Yeah. So check it out guys, this is an Indian translation. Alapada is alligator. Shokoloski is old house. Hialeah is beautiful Perry. Okeechobee, big water. Tallahassee, old town. This right here is the actual gift shop, the modern side of the, of the store. So you can get souvenirs, t-shirts, magnets, stuff like that. So it's still a running store. The gift store was actually named after Chief Tiger Tail, who was a very close uh, friend of Ted Smallwood and he was a Seminole Indian. So you could get books, you could get shell, jewelry boxes, t-shirts, t-shirts for $19.95 and long sleeves for $23.95. Alright guys, that concludes our visit here to the Smallwood store in Chocolosky, Florida. Yeah, so overall we had a really good time um i think it's worth it for five dollar admission um you get to do the store the museum and if you want to spend a little bit more money you could go on the boat tour to the Ten Thousand islands and you will probably encounter some dolphins so it's pretty good forty dollars per hour per, per person, person. Mm -hmm. so i would definitely recommend this place it has a lot of history including that crazy story about a serial killer <laughs> yeah so, that yeah. was very interesting and it's a cool story how, how that happened. Yeah, it's not a spot. Shokolovsky is not an easy place to get to because it is an island and it's like you're basically in the middle of nowhere. But if for whatever reason you are around this area, you this is definitely something cool. Yes, for sure. You want to come and check out this place and it's just it's a really cool little small island that you will enjoy. Yeah, and the store is still family ran, it's still family mm -hmm. owned, it's still in the bloodline. It's ran right now by the great grandson so of Ted, who is the original owner. So like we told you the whole story. So definitely it's worth it. It's a big piece of history and you gotta always support your mom pop shops. So Definitely. <laughs> At least we do. We try to. We try to. We're very firm believers in that. So everywhere that we go, we like to do the local stuff. So, with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe, ding that bell, leave them comments, and all that good stuff. And don't forget to meet new faces. See new places. And always leave a space for love. Bye. Peace. Check it out. This is the washing machine that they used to use back in the days. It was not power operated because remember that electricity didn't arrive till like 1955. So, this was check this out. operated by generator. Our father's no right gator. And it's a washer and a dryer. All in one. It was savage.